I'm here with Professor Dominic Turk from the uh, uh, the chair of the NDA panel. Hello, Tony. Hi, it's good to see you again. Same for me. Um, I hear you've just finished your um, open plenary meeting. Yes. And I believe novel foods were an important part of the discussions this week. Yes, yes, work. Uh, novel foods represent a, a very heavy workload in the NDA panel. So uh, that was the case for this uh, for this plenary. So on the first day, which was a, a closed meeting, we discussed on four opinions related to uh, novel foods. Uh, one was insect. And today we had a, a very interesting uh, session prepared by, by the, the staff from EFSA, the staff dealing with uh, novel foods. Uh, and the goal was to present the observers, uh, the trends in, in the risk assessment of novel foods in, in the years to come, uh, with a specific focus on uh, novel uh, proteins and also novel carbohydrates and uh, the last part with really a kind of uh, miscellaneous section on on other trends. And uh, it was really interesting because it, it was obvious that uh, the risk assessment of novel food is now uh, very complex, very diverse. There is a need for interactivity between panels from of EFSA to uh, assess uh, those uh, novel foods. And by the way, there was really very good interaction between the observers and and, uh, and the nutri staff and the, the members of the working group on novel foods with questions uh, on, on the on the web i believe you had some other discussions as well um, maybe you can just quickly recap um, where you went with those yes uh, we on the second day uh, of the uh, plenary we had a, a, a good discussion on uh, an international liaison group on DRVs and upper levels. This group was launched uh, very recently uh, at the, around June or July of this year at the initiative of EFSA. Uh, EFSA contacted other uh, bodies as uh, uh, bodies from US and Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, WHO of course, and others may join in the future uh, the uh, general objective of this uh, liaison group is to try to uh, harmonize or at least discuss more uh, the way uh, these the DRVs and upper limits can be uh, set uh, and also um, how you could take into account not only uh, the safety issue of those upper levels, in other words, uh, what is the level that I should not go over to be on the safe side, but also uh, to introduce a kind of new concept, which is uh, at this specific level of nutrient intake, you are also in the safe side, you are going to cover your needs, your nutritional needs, but also you are going to decrease the risk of a chronic disorder, which may be related partly or totally to the intake of uh, this uh, specific nutrient. You mentioned observers earlier. Um, do you, off the top of your head, recall how many you had and uh, what the, just generally, how, how was the interaction? Uh, I have all the numbers in, in, in mind because I knew I had to, to meet with you. So, no, I mean, uh, as of yesterday, uh, 119 observers uh, mm. uh, registered to, uh, to the uh, plenary and today, uh, we had, I think, a maximum of around, at one time, uh, we had a maximum of around 80, uh, 80 uh, observers connected. So, uh, and, and, and again, a lot of questions, either orally or with, uh, with the chat. So, uh, a good interaction. I just wanted to say a word that we also discussed the uh, uh, new uh, regulation on transparency, which is going to uh, be in place uh, in, next, in March of next year. And so uh, we got uh, information on what would be the consequences of this uh, transparency regulation with respect to um, scientific assessment and, and also the guidances that have been published 
uh, in the past by the uh, NDA panel, and uh, where well, the consequences are, will be mainly uh, on the administrative side, and not that much, uh, no big consequences, if any, uh, are, are on the scientific assessment that uh, that we are that we have to do. Right, thanks, thanks very much, uh, Dominique, and uh, uh, enjoy your lunch, and I hope to see you again soon. Yeah, same for me.